Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at people who realize their childhood was not normal. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. My parents divorced when I was three years old because they started using crystal meth together and my mum got hooked. Dad told her to get help or he was leaving and she chose to move in with their meth dealer, marrying him several years later. Dad got custody of us and that was its own negative situation, though Dad never got high again and neither did his second wife, so at least that part was better. But in the first few years, we still spent a lot of time with mum in her drug house. This included that during the summer, we were with mum full time, only seeing dad or his family on Wednesdays and every other weekend. The first few years after the divorce were the worst, using wise amongst my mum and my stepdad. In the autumn when I was six, they had a baby, a little boy. I ended up being the one that cared for him when I was over there, as mum and stepdad were often too high to bother to care for him correctly, and they taught me how. Anyway, the summer after the baby was born, I'm six, my sister is five, and the baby is about seven to eight months old or so. My sister and I were playing outside when she complained that her toe hurt. Mum was awake, so I took my sister to her to tell her. My sister always had a very low tolerance for pain and she became aggressive when my mum tried to look at it. Being high, my mum ended up slapping a band-aid on it without really looking at it and telling my sister it was going to be just fine. Sister still complained that her toe hurt a little bit, but we were able to go on as normal. Fast forward a couple of days, sister is still complaining. Mum has been awake for about three days. My mum and I cornered my sister in the bathroom and tried to hold her down to look at her toe. My sister was kicking, biting and screaming bloody murder. Mum decided to just forget about it and leaves my sister with a sore toe. She crashes from her meth high a few hours later and we know she's going to be out for a while. Often she would crash and sleep for 24 to 27 hours straight but we were little so we're sure that my sister is going to be fine. The next morning I woke up to get the baby a bottle and tried to wake my sister up. She was literally grey. She could barely open her eyes. She refused to get out of bed or even talk to me. I was scared. I fed the baby a bottle and went to check on my sister. Still grey and still not talking, still can't really open her eyes. I realised I needed to do something. I snuck into my mum's room where she and my stepdad were still sleeping soundly and I stole her cell phone. I called my dad's mum and told her I thought sister was really sick and she needed to come get us. She asked where my mum was and I told her she was sleeping and I couldn't wake her up or she'd be mad at me. She asked me to try anyway but I couldn't get mum to wake up. Grandma said she was coming. She called my other grandma to come pick my baby brother. Grandma got to us, waited with us until my other grandma picked up my baby brother and then we went straight to a clinic at the hospital grandma worked at. Sister was so sick, she couldn't even try to be aggressive with them. I was in the room at the doctor's office with them to answer questions because sister couldn't. I explained to him that she hurt her toe and she had a band-aid for a couple of days but she just wouldn't get up this morning. He took the band-aid off her toe and I saw his face go pale. He told my grandma to look and my sister's toe was blue, like the colour of mould. Her foot was bright red and there was like lines. I guess snaking up her foot into her lower leg that were bright red. I remember thinking they look like spider legs. He looked at my grandma and told her this little girl needs surgery right now. So my grandma tried to get a hold of my dad at work but he worked at a factory and she was unable to reach him. They couldn't reach mum either. They let my grandma sign the consent because of the severity of the situation. She had cellulitis and it was spreading. She could lose her leg or even her life. I was too little to understand what they really meant but my grandma tried to explain the best she could that sister's toe was what was sick and they might have to cut parts of sister off to make her less sick. When they took her into surgery, that's where it got even worse. Grandma didn't know sister was allergic to penicillin and since she couldn't get a hold of our parents, she had no way to tell the medical staff. Sister had an anaphylactic reaction on the surgery table. At the end, sister had to have her toe amputated and she stayed about a week in the hospital. Grandma and dad helped to be sure that I could stay with her and I remember we had a lot of fun with me pushing her in a wheelchair to the pediatric unit's game room where we played a bunch of video games together while she recovered. I also remember the original doctor coming to tell me that I saved my sister's life, but I didn't know what that meant at the time. I was little enough and the crazy situations were normalized enough for me that I didn't question how serious it was. Sister's toe got sick, they removed it, she's not great anymore, and sometimes this stuff happens. We're both now in our 30s and I work as a substance abuse counsellor. It's the most insane addiction story I've heard of to date. Wow. The fact that their own story was the worst that they heard about. That says a lot. Man, parents like those people, they deserve nothing good in life. Like seriously, that is so freaking crazy. The fact that they were already addicted, but they still thought it was a good idea to have another kid and make the other kids take care of the baby. 
oh my gosh and they don't even care about the kids like you know her toe is hurting so much and she just stuck a band-aid on and was like whatever it'll get better soon whatever it's so sad that at like seven these little kids have to take care of another baby and their childhood is just remembering horrible stuff my mum strangled me when I was 11. My takeaway for a long time was how kind she was because she wrapped a folded towel around my neck before taking me to x-ray. Kids will do anything to protect the image of the parents as good guys. That's so sad. I heard about a story that's like that exact quote where the parents or the mum was treating the little boy so badly, like beating him every single time and he thinks that it's his fault. You know, he's like blaming himself, saying he can't be the good kid that his mum wants. And that's why she's beating him. She, he's justifying his mum's actions because he doesn't want her to be seen as a bad guy. <laughs> it's so sad. I was sitting on the couch at five years old when my parents started arguing and my mum threw a red book at my dad. Just thought it was a fight. Turns out it was the pre-divorce fight after my dad caught her cheating. Didn't learn about the cheating until I was 16 and only recently learned it was a brick that she threw at him. <gasps> Bro, how do you be cheating and then you're, you're mad at him? You're mad at him when you're the one who cheated? Oh hell no. The freaking audacity. Seriously? She threw a brick. She could have killed him. I remember cuddling up with my mom and she had a brace on her nose. It's the kind you have after a surgery. And we talked about a nasal surgery. It took like 10 years later before I realized that the reason for the corrective surgery was my dad's fist. Damn. It's like they just want to protect the kids from like the crazy thoughts, you know. They don't want the kids to grow up thinking the world is like that. I had this friend as about a 10 year old kid who lived in a trailer park during the summers and we would pretty much just roam the neighborhood all day or do whatever and our parents would have no clue where we were. One day he decided to run inside to get some toy or whatever and I followed. I saw his mom passed out on the couch, a needle in her arm and this kid who couldn't have been more than 8 or 9 and was just like, oh yeah, she's like that all the time. I was like, okay, grab your toy and let's go. Now thinking back, it just breaks my heart. You know what's a miracle? Sometimes kids with these parents, they still turn out to be like amazing people in the end. I was adopted. Due to being an orphan, I didn't get the social interaction as other kids. Fast forward to being adopted and meeting with girls and boys on the neighborhood. A rumor went around I was incapable of feeling pain or reacting to it. Well, two of these girls decided to test this. They took scissors and cut my face with the straight blades. I don't remember this. I only have what my parents have told me and what I had supposed told them when I came home. According to them, my lack of reaction to pain or blood freaked the girls out and they refused to ever play with me again. I was maybe four to six at the time. What? So they think this person is the weird one for not feeling pain, but they literally cut someone's face and they think they're normal? Um, you guys are psychos. You're not normal. My classmate in third grade who I had known since kindergarten asked me to follow her home after school because she was scared. She also started flinching to fist bumps around that time, to any fist really. After the school made some deal out of me escorting her home and heading back to school to wait for my mom to pick me up, I never saw her again. I am guessing the father was abusive but I will never know. <gasps> oh my god that's so sad. Why would the school intervene? You can't walk her home. What? Dude, sometimes schools really do be doing nothing good. It's like, what the heck are you guys doing? What are you thinking? What kind of rules do you have in place? Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.